one of the things that people have expressed incredulity about over the years uh, is how could Lori Berenson have come to Peru after having been uh, an aide to the top leadership of the FMLN, ended up in that house with those people under those circumstances and not knowing who she was with. Did you know, if not by name, who you were with? And, and, and I had notions. I didn't exactly know it. And I didn't know enough about Peru. And that was probably my big mistake uh, coming here, was that I didn't very, knew very little about Peru. And that's why I thought it was similar to Central America in, in, in the way uh, the reality of, of those situations were regarded. It might have been in years before, but certainly by 1994, it was not. And so you had you really had no inkling, or when did you start? To I, I no, I certainly did start to suspect rather early on, but I just there are things I learned to ignore, and that's that was something I shouldn't have done. I should have just been clear about it and said, "Okay, this is going on," so I will openly decide to support this or not. I started a very per, very nice personal relationship with people and said, "Okay." Yeah, something looks a little bit fishier than it should, but that's normal and that's okay. And I, I guess I've lived through something similar in another in other circumstances. And said, well, you know, it's their right. I'm not doing it. It's their right, but I didn't realize how much that was part of my problem. And it was my problem, and I assumed that because I did it. I didn't know one obliged me to. I did that willingly, thinking I wasn't doing wrong. But, I mean, as of now, the polls show that the vast majority of Majorians don't believe that you're repentant. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what I need to do to make, my, make myself believe. I mean, I think, uh, I remember talking to people, because traditionally in these circumstances a woman should get up and cry. And if I did that, they would say, oh, she wants us to feel sorry for her. I mean, this is the kind of thing I feel I'm up against. But honestly, I think people have always expected of me something else, and then once I give them that other thing, they don't want that either, so I just, I think I have no way out anyway. What criminal actions do you assume responsibility for? I mean, in your view, what are you guilty of, and what do you feel repentance for having done? Which can be specific about it. Okay, well, collaboration is, I, the house that I participated in renting, I allowed it to be used for uh, people who wound up being from the MRTA specifically, um, to live in. Um, I did not know about the arm, but I definitely did allow them to use that space. I didn't, may not have known about the details, what they were doing or not with that space, but I did that, and I did that willingly. Um, probably not knowing, the, definitely not knowing uh, the, the, uh, the outcome that, that happened, or, or the uh, possible outcome of what they were going to use it for. I didn't understand it was going to be used for that, but, you know, I didn't verify it either. I didn't, you know, say, so you're doing this? You know, that's, that, I, that wouldn't... So that is what I feel responsible for. I did not, what am I apologizing for if my acts, which just that, even if it's just a small thing, if that contributed to political violence in Peru and to the whole damage done by violence in Peru, that is what I'm apologizing for. Even though I don't feel as though I've never killed anyone, nor would I ever kill anyone, that I did never participate in an act of violence, but I know if my acts or my words have affected that or have created exacerbated things, then that is what I am apologizing for. Particularly, I mean, not only my acts, but the act, anything in my words. That, that was that was specifically, um, that, that is maybe perhaps something I didn't say in 2001. That is the, I guess the, probably the bigger difference is that, you know, it's not, it's, like in retrospect, and this is something that years of being in prison might teach you, it's not just what I did. It's the whole situation I may have been tied to that is something that is bad and I should and I should apologize for that and I do. If you are returned to prison, what are your plans for your little boy? That's a difficult question. I mean that we had I had originally he has permission to leave the country, so he could leave tomorrow. But I don't know what the best for him is because he's very upset. And so I I think he knows this. He's probably heard us. He's bilingual. At least he he hears and understands everything. He doesn't speak. So I he definitely been crying every night for the I guess the last month or so he's been very sensitive, and the last four or five nights have been a nightmare. He's just very very upset. And every he sees me leave, he gets very. I, I think he knows that something's happening. And he saw me this morning, and he saw that I was dressed up. And he just didn't want to leave my side, and I had to get ready or whatever, and he was just very, he was very upset. So I, I don't know what to do. Like, bringing him back to prison is, 
it's very small quarters to have three people in one cell, and even if it was if it was just he, he and I, it's too it's not big enough, and he's seen too much of the world. So I don't know if that's good for him. I mean, I I, I don't really know what to do with that. It's very difficult for us. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I haven't decided. We haven't decided yet. But it's hard. You know, my parents could, in theory, take him. It's just they are. My parents are going to be seven. My father will be seven in next year. So it's not like they're going to be the best people to be taking care of a one-year-old. So, but even so, I mean, they're willing to take him. The problems. I don't know what to do. In the early years of your imprisonment, I mean, you were living under incredibly harsh conditions. Uh, in the last two years. You were pregnant, you gave birth, you raised a child mm-hmm. in prison for, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for a little more than a mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel that that latter part of your incarceration, and, you know, being a mother, has changed your view? I mean, has that had a real impact on you? Well, I think my view has changed before that. I mean, it wasn't because I, uh, I, I, it was certainly, it was part of a, a series of things, but certainly by the time... I got pregnant. I was. I mean, I used to work all day. I, I'm, 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 I just. I used to work a lot. Um, I guess I hadn't really decided was I going to study or not. I was more in this like, oh, maybe I should sort of organize myself. But I, I did. Wasn't really sure of how much time I had left, and so organized myself in function of how much time I had left. And there were still benefits until last October. They took them away. So I, my vision was always, well, I'm going to apply for benefits as soon as I can, and then, of course, in the interim. First I got sick, and then I got pregnant, and then I was dealing... And basically, this, with my whole year and a half in prison here has been more my health. The baby and my health was my year, so that was my year and, year and a half or so that I was in Lima. And you got sick. What was... what happened? What, what was the condition? You know, I had a... Uh, I had back problems for a long time, but it was finally diagnosed. I finally got an MRI in 2008 that showed that there was a problem that needed to be resolved. So that was... that's why I had surgery last uh, November. 